Today, we're going to add soft edges to our particles. Let's go. All right, for the last two months, we've been building a particle system in a shader, and we're almost done. We're going to start out in Unity today, and then in a minute, I'll switch over to Unreal and we'll do the same thing there. Here you can see a couple of effects that we've created uh, with our particle system, and they're looking pretty good. If you haven't seen the previous videos in this series, I'll put a link to the playlist for all the videos that show you how to make this particle system down in the description so you can catch up. So there's still one major feature we need to add to our particle system. If we take a look at our waterfall particles here, you can see that where the particle planes intersect with the ground, there's this hard line. This is not good because it breaks the illusion. The particles are supposed to represent a volume of material. So seeing that hard edge gives away the fact that the particles are just flat planes or billboards instead of a volume of tiny particulates. So how do we fix this? We want to get rid of these hard edges that we see where the particles come close to or intersect with other objects. What we want to do is create a mask that's black wherever the particles are near other scene geometry and then multiply that mask by the particle opacity. So let's take a look at how to do that. All right, this guy right here is how the magic happens. I've created this shader graph subgraph called depth fade. And you can see that we have our scene depth node, our screen position node, the alpha channel, and we're subtracting them. Then we divide by distance and saturate. So what is happening here exactly? Well, the particles distance from the camera is contained in the alpha channel of the screen possession node when we set it to raw. So we'll set the screen position to raw and then grab the alpha channel uh, from screen position. That is the particles distance from the camera. And to get the distance of the rest of the objects in the scene, we use the scene depth node set to I instead of raw or linear, we set it to I. And so this represents the distance of the other objects in the scene. So if we subtract the distance from our particle from the distance of the other objects in the scene, what we're left with is the distance from the particle to whatever is behind it. And that's what we can use for our mask. So we take that value and we divide it by this distance uh, parameter, which gives us some control over how close or far away the particles need to be to other scene geometry in order for the mask to be black or dark. We saturate the result and then we pass it out. All right, so this is creating our depth mask. And let's switch back to our particle system shader and see how we can use this depth mask. So here we are in our particle system shader, and you can see it's fairly complex. But like I said, we've been building this over the last couple of months, and we've built all of these different components of the particle system in all of the tutorial videos that we've done previously. So go back and catch up if you haven't seen uh, any of the rest of the videos yet. For today, we're just going to focus on creating the soft edges of the particle or using this distance fade subgraph that I just talked about. So I'm just going to come in here and we're going to type depth fade and I'll add this subgraph that I created. And I'm just going to set the distance to two. And just so you can visualize what's happening, I'm going to take the output of depth fade and I'm going to wire it into the color uh, in our master stack here just so that you can visualize what the depth fade node is doing. I'm also gonna remove the opacity from our particles for now, just so that we can see the particle planes and see what's coming out of this depth fade node. So I'll go ahead and save it and we'll switch back to our scene. 
And so now what we see in our scene here is the output of that depth fade node. So if I come over here to our waterfall, you can see that wherever the particles are getting close to or intersecting with the ground plane here, that depth fade node is outputting black for our mask. And the same thing is true for our fountain particles here. The particles are black wherever they're intersecting with the ground. Now to see this a little bit more clearly, I've also created a simple sphere here and I'll move it over to our waterfall. And what you're gonna see is that as the, water far, as the waterfall particles get close to or intersect with this sphere, they turn black in the areas where that's happening. So as I move my sphere up, the particles turn black and as I move the sphere away, they turn white again. So this is the mask that we can use to fade out our particles and hide those hard intersection edges where the particles are intersecting with objects in the scene. Okay, well, let's go ahead and set it up then. So we'll come back to our particle system shader and I'm just gonna wire the color directly in. And all I need to do really is just multiply the opacity value that I already had by this depth fade value. So it's pretty simple. Just take the depth fade and multiply it by our opacity value. And then we can just plug that directly in. I do wanna add uh, a couple of features to make it nicer for our users. And so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna add a Boolean parameter and I'll call this soft edges. And I'm gonna move it into our opacity group. And this Boolean parameter, I'm gonna to use to control a branch or a switch. So here's my branch. If soft edges is true, we're gonna pass that into our branch node. Then we're gonna use the branch that's multiplied by our depth fade node here. So I'll plug that into true. And if soft edges is false, I'm just gonna use the opacity that we already created here without multiplying by our depth fade. So that'll give the user of the particle system the ability to choose if they wanna use soft edges or not. And then I can just connect this directly into the alpha input on my master stack. Okay, and then the one other control that we can add if we want to control how far or close the particles have to be to a surface in order for this depth fade to work is uh, a control, a parameter to control this distance input value here. So I'm just going to add a float parameter here and we'll call this soft edge distance. And I'm gonna open up my inspector and we're gonna set the soft edge distance default value to two just because I like the way that looks. So I'm gonna drag this value down and now under opacity, we have our main opacity fade in and out power and then we have our soft edge Boolean and our soft edge distance. All right, so let's go ahead and save this and we'll take a look at our scene and what we can do with these new parameters that we've added. Okay, here we are in our scene. And you can see that I've opened up the material instances for each of our particle systems. So here's our waterfall. And you can see I have my parameters here for controlling the opacity. And I have the new parameters that I've just added today. I've got soft edges and soft edge distance. So let's kind of come over here and zoom into our waterfall. And you can see that soft edges is off or false. So I'm still getting these hard edges down here at the bottom. If I turn on soft edges, you can see that now those hard edges are gone and my particles have this really nice fade um, where when they intersect with the ground plane, they have a nice soft edge. And I can use this soft edge distance value to control how much of that fade I wanna add. Let's set it to six and that doesn't seem to do anything. Maybe if I set it to, no. Actually, let's go back and take a look at the shader and see why this value isn't working the way that I intended it to. 
Ah, I see. It's because I made a dumb mistake. So here's that soft edge distance parameter that we set up and I actually just didn't connect it where it needed to be connected. So I need to just take soft edge distance and wire that into the distance input on my depth fade node. All right, so we'll save that and take a look again. Okay, great. Now I should be able to use my soft edge distance value to control the softness of these particles. Yeah, so I can give it a value of like 500 and now you can see that they just fade out a lot. Um, but if I set it to like something like one, now the soft edges are just like right down here at the bottom. So the lower this value is, the sharper the edge is gonna be and the higher this value is, the softer that edge is gonna be. All right, so we'll just set this to two. And we can also see with our sphere, if I move this sphere around so that it's intersecting with the particle system, wherever those intersections are happening, you can see that the edges are nice and soft where the particles are intersecting with the sphere instead of um, those hard edges that give away the fact that we're using billboards. All right, so we can go ahead and add soft edges to our other particle effects as well. I'll add it to our smoke effect here. And now you can see when the particles come in, instead of having hard edges where those intersections are happening, the edges are soft. Let's see what happens when we add them to our fountain particle effect. Just turn on soft edges here. And now our intersection lines are completely gone. You don't really see them with the mist particles that I have here just because of how opaque they are, or I'm sorry, how transparent they are. But if I go ahead and turn on soft edges, anytime this particle effect does intersect with the ground plane, uh, you'll never see that intersection line. Okay, there is one thing that I wanna say about this effect regarding performance, and that is, um, because we're sampling the scene depth with this particular uh, tool, this may be uh, the most expensive thing that the shader is doing because we're sampling the scene depth in the pixel shader. So if you're really concerned about the performance of your particle system and you want it to go just as fast as possible, this may be a step that you wanna leave out. You may wanna just not do this soft edges effect and that will allow your particle system to run uh, quite a bit faster than with it. Um, this is actually, there, there is a bit of expense to this because we're sampling that scene depth. So if you're running on a low end mobile device and you just need your particle effects to run super fast, um, go ahead and leave out that depth fade node that we added today. But otherwise, if you want your particles to have nice soft edges wherever they intersect with scene geometry, this is a great feature to have. Okay, let's switch over to Unreal and we'll add our soft edges feature there as well. All right, here we are in Unreal and we're gonna add the soft edges feature here as well. If I come over here to my waterfall and I zoom in, you can see that currently, while well, these particles are moving really fast. Hey, one thing that I, I hope that you guys can tell me down in the comments, the speed that things are happening in Unreal is really variable and I haven't been able to figure out why. Like right now my particle systems are just running really fast, like this waterfall for example. Um, sometimes they run fast and sometimes they run slow. What is it that controls that? If you guys can tell me down in the comments, I'd really appreciate it. Um, so this waterfall is not intended to be running this slow, but if I change the parameter, like sometimes it looks the way that I want it to, and sometimes it doesn't. And I haven't been able to figure out that yet. Anyway, where the particles are intersecting with the ground plane, there's an, a hard edge. Now, one thing that's cool about Unreal is that um, this parallax occlusion mapping that I've got going on on this plane is actually writing to the depth. And so those hard edges are not quite as uh, precisely horizontal as they are in Unity because um, because my edges are varied based on this, this really neat um, cobblestones pattern. 
If I get down here low enough and I look, you can you can see these kind of striated lines, which are the like the classic uh, problem that parallax occlusion mapping has. But anyway, we're kind of getting off subject. Um, here, here's a good example. You can see our smoke where the particles are intersecting with the ground plane. There are these hard edges wherever they're intersecting. So that's what we're going to get rid of today. And the way that we're going to do that is by measuring the distance from the particles to whatever scene geometry is behind them. And we're going to use a node called depth fade in order to do that. So let's switch over to our particle system. Here's the particle system that we've been building for the last two months. And if you haven't seen what the rest of this is doing or worked through the other tutorials, uh, like I said earlier, I'll go ahead and link that down in the description. And you can see the other videos to see how we've put all of this together. So today we're going to be focused specifically on creating that uh, soft edges effect. So I'm going to go ahead and right click here and I'm just going to type depth and we'll get our depth fade node. So what does this do exactly? Well, in Unity, I was able to go into this node as it was a subgraph, but here our depth fade is actually built right into the engine, so I can't open it up and see what's happening. But let me go ahead and explain it for you guys. What this does is it finds the distance that the particle is from the camera. And then it gets the distance that the scene is from the camera and subtracts the particle's distance from the scene distance. And what that gives us is how far away is the particle from whatever's behind it. And then we can just divide that by a parameter here. In this case, it's called fade distance to give us some control. But by finding the distance from the particle to whatever is near it or behind it, we're then able to turn that value into a black and white mask where whatever is black is close to the particles and whatever is white, that means there's nothing near it. So what I'm going to do here really quickly is I'm just going to take the output of my depth fade node and pass that into my emissive color. And then I'm going to disconnect opacity. And this should allow us to just take a look at what our particle fade node is doing. So let's save this and switch back to our scene. Yeah, and now it's really apparent what this depth fade node is doing. Wherever our particles are close to scene geometry, you can see that they turn black. And where there's more space in between the particles and whatever's behind them, uh, that mask is white. So we're able to multiply this value by our existing particle opacity to soften our edges. Let's go ahead and set our fade distance to something higher. We'll set it to 500 centimeters and switch back to our scene here. Yeah, now it's a little bit more pronounced. Okay, so let's go ahead and hook this up as a mask for our opacity. So here's our depth fade. Here's our color. We'll reconnect that. And then here is our opacity. And what we need to do is multiply our opacity by our depth fade value. Now we could just wire this directly in but we want to give our users a little bit more control. And so the way that we're going to do that is by adding a switch node. And we'll plug this into our true. So when our Boolean value is true, we're going to be doing the depth fade multiply. And when it's false, we're just going to take the opacity as it was before that multiply. Now to control this switch, I'm going to add a Boolean parameter. And we're going to call this parameter soft edges. And I'll connect that up to the value input on my switch. And the other thing that we need to do is to go ahead and add a parameter that controls this fade distance here. So I'm going to add a scalar parameter for that one. And we're going to name this parameter soft edge fade distance and we'll give it a default value of 
a hundred and then just go ahead and connect it up to our fade distance here. Now it looks like this fade distance node is actually handling this multiply internally. And so instead of multiplying it afterward, I can just take my opacity and pass it in like that and then just skip this multiply because that multiply is already happening inside our depth fade node. Okay, now I can take the result of my switch and pass it in as my opacity. Okay, let's clean up our nodes just a little bit here and we'll group this set here. And I'm gonna call this soft edges. All right, let's switch back to our scene and take a look at what we've done. Okay, here we are back in our scene and you can see that for each of the particle effects, I've opened up the material instances. So here's the material instance that controls our waterfall. And if I turn on soft edges and then set our soft edge fade distance to something like 500, now you can see that down here at the bottom of the waterfall, our particles are quite a bit more uh, transparent. So I can use this value here to control how sharp or soft those edges are. Let's go ahead and add it to our smoke as well. I'll just zoom in here to the bottom of our smoke particle effect. Here are our opacity values. I'm gonna check soft edges, turn those on. Now you can see that wherever those intersections were happening, that's no longer happening. And I can use this soft edge fade distance value to control uh, how sharp or soft those edges are. So if I set it to something like 50, now you can see that um, I can see a little bit more of the bottom of the particle, but I'm still getting some nice fade out. And if I set it to one, now those hard edges are back, but you know, I might wanna find a, a good balance here um, between edges that are too soft and uh, edges that are too hard. Okay, so that's good for the smoke. Let's go ahead and take a look at our fountain here. You can see that our fountain particle effects have those hard edges down here at the bottom. So I'll just go ahead and turn on soft edges. And I can also turn on soft edge fade distance and control how much of the edge I want to have visible versus how transparent these particles are gonna be down here at the bottom. So I can just kind of dial in a value that works really nicely. All right, and once again, for our mist particles, because they're so transparent, you can't really see those intersections at all, but I can still turn on soft edges and set the fade distance to something, I'm gonna set that to kind of high on our mist particles because we want them to be kind of ethereal and misty looking and not really intersect with any scene geometry. Okay, so there we go. We've got added our soft edges effect to our particles and they're looking great. No more hard edges where they're intersecting with things. Okay, so what I've shown you so far are all of the features that I was planning on adding to our particle system. What I'd like to hear from you now is if there's anything you'd like to see added to the particle system um, that you've found as you've been building this, like what are you not able to do with this existing feature set? Go ahead and leave those in the comments and it's possible that if I get enough really good ideas, I'll make one more video or maybe two more even uh, with the ideas that you guys give me for features that we're gonna add to our particle system. So let me know what other things you'd like to see in this particle system. And maybe next week uh, we'll add those as well. Thanks a lot for watching and for sticking with me. I've never done a series like this where I've done like 12 videos in a row all on the same topic, but I really appreciate you guys that have watched all of these all the way to the end and for supporting the channel like that. Thank you so much. All right, have a great week and we'll see you in the next one.